Good evening from the Pumpkin Patch. This is the Jack O' Lantern Press Podcast. I'm Michael Piccarella. I'm Tom Piccarella. And I'm Robert Piccarella. Jack O' Lantern Press.com is a monster blog for monsters only. The Jack O' Lantern Press Podcast is a monster pod for monsters only. While our blog carves out parody monster news and entertainment, here on the podcast, we'll talk about and review cool things for those obsessed with Halloween and monsters. All Hallow's Eve and the monster craze are alive and well here. It's the Jack O' Lantern Press Podcast, your Scream Central. Now on with the show. It's October 9th, 2016. This is episode one of the Jack O' Lantern Press Podcast. Today we're going to talk about atmosphere effects, digital decorations, which is uh, becoming more and more popular every year. Um, if you don't know about it, we're going to tell you all about it. If you do know about it, we're going to uh, tell you, uh, give you some updates on some of the new things that they're doing. And then we'll also talk about the podcast and website Nightmare 365, which is a really cool website for all things that are Halloween 365 days uh, a year. So uh, here we go. All right, so it's interesting, you know, I, uh, I've stumbled across this site, Atmosphere Effects. Um, you can go there, I think it's uh, www.atmosphere, and it's not like the actual atmosphere, it's A-T-M-O-S-F-E-A-R-F-X, and we'll, we'll put that in the show notes uh, um, so people can just go right to the site, but this is this is a a pretty cool um, deal that they got going on here. Um, when when we say digital decorations, they they actually have things that they've recorded, whether it be computer generated or whether it's live action um, media that you could put on DVDs and uh, kind of throw in your 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 uh, your DVD player, or you could throw it in your computer. Um, and basically either project it using any projector. Um, you know, obviously the better lumens on your projector, the, the clearer the image is going to be. So don't think you could just go out and, you know, purchase, you know, some cheesy projector. I mean, it still works, but, um, you know, it's definitely better if you have a, a pretty decent projector. Um, but they they sell all sorts of of different DVDs right now. Um, I'll just go down some of the ones that that I've actually purchased. Um, I have uh, Phantasms, which is is basically a bunch of of ghouls and ghosts and stuff that they have just kind of doing different things. Um, this is one of my favorites, uh, the Phantasms. They, they have like these skeletal guys and they're, I think they call them wraiths and they're, they're floating, you know, across, they'll either like fly quick, they'll jump out, you know, kind of like more like a jump scare. Um, or they, they have, you know, like different things, situations and whatnot that they do on here. And what's cool about it is they actually give you a ton of different ways of, of looking at this. You, like I said, you could either you can either put this on like a TV screen. So like if you're at a party or something, you could put your TV, you know, just sitting in your living room or something and have these dudes just pop up. Yeah. One um, of them, one of them looks like they, they have a TV that's hanging on a wall and the digital projection has like a picture frame around it. So it looks like your TV could be a picture frame and then yeah. the image on on what's supposed to be a painting actually um, is a monster that'll pop out of the wall. I haven't actually tried that one. The only things that, that I've done with the ones that I purchased um, was I, I hung a sheet in my window and projected the, the ghosts or skeleton um, silhouettes. Um, so it looks like something's in the room there, um, which kind of goes back to something that you and I did um, back in the 1990s when we were doing um, haunted houses, um, we saw Phantasmic at Disneyland. And I remember, I don't know if you even oh, remember. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Like they, they shot up these screens of water 
out of out of the rivers of America, and they would project images on that the screens of water, which now they do at California Adventure um, in, in really huge ways. But I remember we thought it was really neat because they projected the the Fantasia ghosts on those screens of water. And so we wanted to do the same thing. So what we did was we we grabbed a Super 8 um, camera and we had a big screen TV We and we owned the movie Fantasia and we would play a section of the, the ghosts flying in that Night on Bald Mountain scene. Anyone oh, I, you know what? That? I remember that. Yeah, that was I actually put, really neat. I put like a blue filter on the lens to make it even more ghostly. And we would shoot a few seconds of just the ghost flying. And we, and we did a whole reel of film just shooting those ghosts. And then we developed the film. We hung a sheet in our front window of the house. And we projected those ghost images on that sheet. So from um, outside, it looked like those ghosts were flying around in our house. And that's basically the idea of this atmosphere effect. So when I saw it, I thought, wow, this is this is exactly what we wanted to do, except now it's geared toward looking like something inside of a house. And, so it, and like, it looks it looks pretty real. I mean, these things are shot in HD. I mean, it doesn't look it doesn't look like garbage. I mean, when you when you're if you have a good projector, um, you know, one of the ones that I'm using, just in case people are wondering, is I have a, a projector that's a little over 2,000 lumens, um, and that's plenty. I mean, it, you could probably even get away. I also have like a, a little, uh, like $150 one, but it's only it's only like a, a hundred or 200 lumens, but it still works with some of the things that uh, that they have. Um, it also depends on how big you all also want the projection onto a sheet or, or whatever else. I think they also, um, they also sell like projection material that you can purchase off their site. Yeah. I mean, I even saw, I even saw the stuff at home Depot when I went in, um, last month, they had a whole end cap that you, you buy the projector and it came with a bunch of discs and it even has a Christmas one. And the cool thing about these, like I said, like the window ones, like they set it up so it looks like the people are in the room. So it, it cuts the people off at like the waists or, you know, half, you know, partly down the legs. So it looks like they're in the house. So like this, the Christmas one is Santa Claus. And you, you, if you, you see like a living room with a Christmas tree and then he, Santa Claus comes in and he touches his nose and disappears or flies away. I can't remember exactly how it works. Yeah, and he touches thing, his nose. Yeah, so it has that. There's a trick or treat one, and then there's a bunch of the Halloween ones because that's what they mainly do. Um, but yeah, there's like a trick or treat one where. Well, that's kids... that's the new ones. That's the new ones that they came out with this year. Is based off of the movie. Oh, the movie. I mean, I mean, trick or treat. There's the trick or treater one where they come in, and then like a werewolf comes in, or a guy yeah, comes, yeah. transforms into a werewolf. Um, there's another one that's really cool where a guy like goes into the room and you see it as a silhouette and I think a phone is ringing or something and, and, uh, he goes to get the phone and then a skeleton comes in and rips his head off. I may be mixing up. Uh, um, no, no, that's, that's that one. That's that one's, that one's called, that one's called, uh, tricks and treats. Yeah. Um, that's actually one that, that I used. Uh, just to give you another example um, of, of a scene in that one, uh, one year I put a sheet on my garage and, and you know, it's just a one car garage, uh, but I, I filled the whole entire sheet uh, in that garage and then projected the Frankenstein one where he comes down like oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's laying down. That. Yeah, yeah like, like he's in the lab whatever. or something. And then he stands up and he tears off the, you know, all the the stuff that's like in the lab, and he chucks Straps it and he throws and it. Yeah, and it 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 looks really good. And and I can say, you know, that that some of these, you know, when you first look at it, you might think, man, you know, this is kind of expensive because they they range anywhere between, 
you know, thirty nine ninety nine, so basically forty bucks. Some of them are actually fifty five bucks. Um, but but that don't let that deter you. These things are actually really good quality. But if you did don't want to spend that, uh, I was gonna say, did you try the uh, project? Like, there's one called Jack O' Lantern Jamboree, and you can yeah. actually project like singing faces or or talking faces onto a Jack O' Lantern. Did you actually try that to see? Yeah, how it, it works. Works. It works perfect. I mean, it's kind of cool because they. Well, uh, let me let me actually go back real quick, just just so everybody understands you know the price um because when they look at the price of the dvd they might they might get freaked out a little bit but it actually these people put quality and time into these products and the the one thing that i also want to bring up is if you don't want to buy the dvd they actually give you other options and some of the other options they will do like individual scenes from from the dvd uh basically the dvd gives you everything that they filmed whether it be uh, like widescreen, uh, or I guess more of like a landscape, which would be like your window, or you can do like doorways. They also just introduced something last year called the hollow illusion, where you can actually set up like a, like a dummy looking figure, which you can also buy the, that prop on their website and then shine your projector up on it. It actually looks like the silhouette but it's animated. It's, it's really cool. You just need to check that out. But they sell individual scenes for $7.99, and you could just download it. So you don't oh, have to yeah, wait for it to show one. up. Yeah. Download. That's cool. And those are $7.99. So let's say, for instance, you're looking at, uh, you know, um, Ghostly Apparitions, which is another really good one. Um, that one kind of reminds me of, like, Ghostbusters with Slimer and some of the the ghosts that they had in there. Um, but they're really well done. Uh, but yeah, you, let's just say, say you just want one of those looks. You could just download it for seven ninety nine, and then you're pretty much good to go. If you got a projector or TV or whatever, you're good to go for seven ninety nine. And I mean, that's a hell of a price. So um, the other thing I was going to throw in there is they got a really good community uh, and support to where if you're having issues um, you could just, you know, ask people in the community. Everyone's pretty helpful there. They also have like tips and tricks videos of how to set these things up and basically go in and, and, uh, and, and I mean, it'll literally show you how to set it all up and stuff. So, um, and I think they, they even sell like media players and they have gift cards. And so if you want to gift somebody this, this stuff, um, it's pretty cool. And this so year, what, what are um, just to go through a couple of, of what they have? I know there were a couple new ones this year, but let's just go through like what all the different ones that they have just to get an idea. Well, um, so I mentioned phantasms, which is like ghostly type things, specters, um, ghouls, and wraith, specters. The, the then we talked about tricks and treats. Um, that one's kind right. of like. That's kind of a little bit more kid friendly. So yeah, if you don't want to have it's the description says featuring Frankenstein, Dracula and the Wolfman introduced the magic of the silver screen to a new generation of trick or treaters. Yeah, that one was cool. That one was uh, good. Um, zombie invasion. That one is actually I think that one is well done. If you want to do like a zombie theme, I actually use that one. And a lot of people were like, man, how did you do? Yeah, some that of was stuff pretty... on there. I didn't see your setup um, in person, but I remember seeing uh, some of the videos and pictures. You had like a car that looked like it was crashed out front and, uh, you know, bodies on the ground that looked like they'd been torn up. And then that, um, you know, you had actual people uh, as zombies, you know, people, your friends and, and people who came out um, of the scene and, and were going after trick or treaters. And then of course, with these digital decorations, it, your house with uh, windows and zombies like coming out the windows and walking by it just it made the whole scene come to life um and it felt like a real zombie invasion um, and I, I think that's that's one of the things though that's that i think is really powerful with these these things is most people you know they just set up a couple of things outside there's no movement 
you know, and, and that's what these bring is they bring movement to where it makes it more realistic. Or even if it's just kind of corny and cheesy looking, these things actually animate everything and bring stuff to life. And it actually is, it makes it fun. It makes it so neat. Just to wrap up real quick. Um, we'll just give a quick rundown. Um, the new ones this year, they have Trick or Treat, which is from the movie. And actually, the, the writer-director, Michael Doherty, actually was involved in uh, bringing Sam from the movie Trick or Treat to life in these decorations. There's Yeah, they actually used the, ra- the, the, the costume, the yeah, real costume on cool. that. Um, there's one called Macabre Manor, which is um, the residence of, of this haunted house. Uh, ghostly apparitions the witching hour one is pretty cool bone chillers looks really cool it's um you know lots of skeletons they have like a skeleton band in there skeletons going around doing mischievous stuff um they have unliving portraits which are it's like a ghoulish gallery of hauntingly beautiful paintings that feature a freakish family that spring to life and death i'm reading the that's more for there. interior i think uh right the jack o lantern Drambree I thought was pretty cool. Um, it's kind of fun. Some of these are are a little gorier, um, like the trick or treat one. Um, the jack o lantern Drambree is more for little kids. You know, it it has jack o lanterns that sing, jack o lanterns that tell s- spooky stories. Um, then the creepy crawly crawlies one has like bugs. So if you want to make like an entryway or a room look like it's covered in swarming bugs or snakes, or I believe there's rodents in there as well. Yeah, rats. Yeah, there's rats, Um, snakes, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Yep. Then there's uh, one called Shades of Evil, Blood Walls, and then a triple thrill pack uh, that says it contains three terrifying scenes featuring an enraged poltergeist, a beautiful yet evil ghoul, and a demon-infested inferno. Definitely worth checking out, atmosfx.com. That's A-T-M-O-S-F-X.com. Um, certainly uh, cool uh, for bringing your your Halloween haunt to life. Um, and it's not that expensive if you think about what you're getting out of it. So, yeah, definitely cool. Yeah. Um, all right, so moving on, um, the next thing we wanted to talk about was a website called Nightmare 365. And um, this is really, it's, it's, it's a podcast, and um, it's basically Halloween theme. It's a Halloween podcast, and it's everything Halloween, um, you know, and it's 365 days a year. So he does these podcasts, I believe, He's on episode 51, and and we at Jack Lantern Press are on episode 51. Um, but some of the stuff that he uh, has on the podcast, you'll have haunters, you know, so people who create um, Halloween haunts, whether it's in their their home or for uh, haunted attractions that um, you know people pay to get in. Um, he's also interviewed. Uh, filmmakers who make horror films he has done uh, there's one group I can't remember what it was these people who they let me see if I could find it's called drinking with goosebumps and I believe this is something that they do on YouTube where they review the goosebumps books oh that's cool I can't remember what it has something to do with drinking but I can't remember I did listen to it but that was back in like 2015 that episode um but they're really cool it's it's if you're if you are getting into Halloween and maybe the stores aren't uh coming out with the stuff early enough for you you could uh go over to Nightmare 365 and just start listening to his podcast his the interviews with these people and it just starts getting you into Halloween um let me just go through some of the podcasts that he has here. Um, let's see. He did one. Well, let me actually let me actually throw something out real quick about about uh, this guy. His name is Matt. I can't remember what his last name is, but uh, I will say that he has a a pretty organized website, um, and he has stuff that you could actually learn a little bit more about uh, the different things that he's doing. So he even has like like history um he's he puts a collection of youtube videos and media links that are all over the place 
Um, even when we've talked to this guy, he is so into Halloween. It's, it's not even funny. I mean, it's, it's, it's just like, like us really. Um, that's how much he's into Halloween. He's got like a, a countdown. He's got, it looks like he's got every single social media. I think he's got what YouTube, um, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, um, yeah, he you know, tries even... to stay pretty locked into the Halloween community, and um, like a lot of the links that, if you go into like the links section on his page, he has all kinds of links to Halloween stores, uh, prop stores. Uh, Looks like events, events like spooky yeah, events. type events. He has a yeah. There's a calendar on there. He calls it a convention calendar, but it's basically a calendar that has different haunts and haunted houses, festivals. Um, and things that you can go to. They have something called the Telluride Horror Show. So he has the dates, where they are. You can click on these links and find out more, you know, find things near you. Um, but some of the other links that he has, um, zombie sites. Um, he has, uh, let's see, web and graphic designers who do, who do uh, Halloween-themed stuff. I think that was one of the podcasts he did someone who designed Halloween themed websites. I think the guy did um, like Halloween haunt haunt websites. So that was like what he specialized in. So there's definitely interesting stuff, you know, if you're into Halloween and you and you want to just search around. I think that's even how you found atmosphere effects, not from Nightmare 365, but you just want to search around these Halloween sites. Uh, and- that's pretty much how I how I ended up finding it. That the other thing too is Remember when we were talking with him, he was, he's really into like the aliens and whatnot. And I mean, he loves monsters, but didn't he say that he went to some, I can't remember what that he, place well, was. He was. When we talked, because we've been on his, his podcast twice. The first time we were on, I was last year and he was about ready to go to Salem, Massachusetts. That's for, what it was. Yeah. Like a witch gathering. And then he was also doing, he's really into like ghosts. Um, and so he was going to some colonial taverns, which I believe I can't I don't know if he has a podcast on that or if he just did some write ups on the website. Um, but, the, you know, these colonial taverns, I guess, are haunted. So he's got information on on that as well. But I mean, it's just if you're into Halloween and you just want to, uh, you know, go somewhere where you can find a whole bunch of stuff. Halloween, that site really is a great resource for it. Um, so it's worth it's worth checking out uh, t- just to to get into into that state of mind if you're if you're into it. Yeah. Plus he's got a countdown. Which what do we got? We got 21 days, six hours, nine minutes. Yeah. Right at this point. So. Um, the, other, the other thing is he does like uh, he's got like a history section on his website and that gives like a brief history of halloween um just you know a lot of the halloween things that um you know if you anything halloween it's it's there and he keeps he keeps this stuff up to date pretty pretty good yeah it seems Um, like he keeps it up to date yeah for sure so yeah no it's a it's a good podcast you guys uh definitely you know like i said we'll put that link in the in the show notes as well um, and then you could just click on it and, or in the comments, um, just, you could click on it and go there, check it out. And you, you guys will, you guys will dig it. Yeah. So, uh, that pretty much wraps up our, our show. We wanted to, one of the things we want to do at the end of, of each of our podcast episodes is, is do what we call Halloween meets. Uh, each, each of us is going to do a, a Halloween meet. Um, and my son Robert is not here with us today, uh, but it'll be, normally be the three of us. Um, but we'll each come up with a Halloween eat. And basically, what Halloween meets is it's actually something that um, we're playing around with on Reddit, where um, we just uh, list the things uh, of Halloween that we find neat, um, cool things that um, that we we feel really capture the essence of Halloween or maybe even our childhood remembering um, Halloween. Um, you know, and everyone has their own cool things about Halloween. Um, what was the, so the, what's the Reddit page for that, Tom? It's just, if you go to Reddit and go to the search and just type Halloween meets, just all one word, uh, 
you just make sure you it's not Halloween neat, it's Halloween neats with an S. That's as soon as you type that in. Yeah. And as soon as you type that in, you'll you'll go right to um right to the subreddit and you'll see the topics that have been posted by people and you can make comments, post your ideas, uh, or post your your things that are neat. And, and, and the reason that we want to do the, the Halloween Neats and, and tell you guys after every podcast is just to give you an example of the, the types of things we're doing on there. And it's just, it's nothing crazy or big. It's just neat memories, neat things around Halloween that maybe somebody else shares with us, you know. Um, so I'll, I'll just get to go right into mine. Um, one of the Halloween Neats that I like is pumpkin candies, because I could tell you right now that when September comes and the grocery stores or, or any other store start packing those packages filled with the, those little marshmallow pumpkin. The mellow, can, I guess, no, the mellow yeah, creams. they're not mellow yeah. creams, not marshmallows, but the mellow creams is what they do. And, and they, those things are the best. And, uh, we kind of have a tradition. Well, you and I both have always had this tradition, but we go down, we buy a few packs of them. We come home, we find that glass pumpkin jar that uh, my mom actually uh, would always have. And so now, now that we're older, I, I went out and bought a, a glass pumpkin yeah, jar I, as well. I found one like uh, two or three years ago. I found one in like CVS or something. So I was like, oh, I got to get that dang. I mean, it was the exact one that, that yeah. mom had. Yeah, and then I'd just open up the bags and dump those babies in. And, uh, and then I would always always take a picture and send it to my mom just because it was always a neat memory. And then, of yeah. course, you're pumped to go and start snacking on these babies. But you can only really eat like maybe four before you, you start yeah. getting a stomachache. As a kid, I remember I used to be able to eat way more of those things. As can, any candy corn. I mean, it's candy corn. Um, but now like I could probably have like three or four and then I'm like sick of them, but I'll tell you like the first pumpkin candy that I eat of the season, it like that taste just brings back all the Halloween memories. Like I always, oh, think yeah. of, like, I don't know if you remember this Tom, but when we were little kids, dad had like a paper three dimensional haunted house that he used to set up. In, oh like, yeah. Dining room. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. And there were like little tombstones and he actually wrote like Boris Karloff and Lon Chaney Jr. on the tombstones. But for some reason, I always think of that. And I think of those um, Halloween bat decorations that we had. Um, but yeah, oh, yeah. those things like just a flood of Halloween memories comes back to me. Um, so, yeah, I love those things, too. Um, my Halloween neat for uh, for this episode is Halloween masks. Um, oh. and so it's just, um, like every year we used to each get a Halloween mask. We'd go down to like Sprouse Ritz, uh, which is like a little drugstore, kind of like CVS <laughs> Sprouse and, uh, Ritz. we would get That's a mask. So and I like to, I always remember like that smell of the rubber <laughs> when you put that thing on just yeah, reminds well, me of Halloween What's funny is, is some of those, exactly. That some of those actually were, you would get like that like vanilla sort of smell i don't, I don't know yeah. if it was vanilla I, but no, there was there was one i had a skeleton mask uh, i remember travis got that one too it had the white hair i just remember travis bought that mask and he was yeah. a scooter back from sprouse ritz and <laughs> i remember the hair like flying back but that particular mask did smell like vanilla but it's funny because like you really when you're wearing that mask on Halloween night, like it starts getting sweaty, it's like starts sticking to your face, but you can really smell the mat, the rubber of the mask. The mask. Yep. And so every time I put on a mask, the it's same with like with the pumpkin candies that the memories of Halloween night just come flooding in because you just think of all those Halloween nights where you're running around the streets. Um, you know, with all that, all that adventure of, you know, what the next house, will it be a scary house? Are you in a neighborhood you've never been to? Are you going to be able to find your way home? Are there real monsters? Like all those memories come back. So, uh, um, well, that's yeah. like my, the wizard mask was oh, really, yeah. that was the one that, that smelled pretty good. And I, and I will say this just for all the listeners, 
these were quality masks. These aren't the things you go down to like Walmart and go purchase off of there. Or, I mean, these are these were actually like yeah, quality were, masks. Masks, yeah. Now that you buy a mask like that and they're so expensive, you can't even afford it. So now you're just getting the Walmart masks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, and then so anyway, so um, anything that you're going to be checking out um, the next week or two, but as we approach Halloween, any any new things that you're you're going to be checking out, Tom? Yeah, actually, um, I'm doing doing a lot of research right now uh, with um, like horror type uh, virtual reality things, which is really going big right now. Um, so there's a couple of like experiences that they they have, and and if anybody is not aware of any sort of virtual reality stuff, I'm referring to uh, not not the Google VR type stuff or the cardboard VR. I'm, I'm referring to like the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive, um, those types of VR experiences like that. They're making haunted house type stuff and haunted horror type experiences that you feel like you're actually there. So um, I'm looking into a lot of that and I'm going to hopefully have some experiences and things that people can, can, uh, can check out, you know, uh, might be doing it on the next one. I'm not sure, but, but that's, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm looking into. Cool. What yeah, do you got gonna, going on? I want to check out a book called Monster Mash, the creepy, kooky monster craze in America, uh, which was between 1957 and 72 by Mark Voger. And this is a pictorial guide of the monster craze. Uh, looks really cool. So uh, we'll probably uh, cover that a little more. It's, it's not like a brand new book. It came out in uh, 2015, but it uh, looks really cool. So anyway, uh, that's neat. Uh, Thanks, uh, everyone, for joining us, and uh, we'll uh, see you next time. All right. Have a good one, guys. That's our show. To learn more about Jack O'Lantern Press, go to jackolanternpress.com. And for questions or to send us a message, email us at jackolanternpress at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Mr. Jack Lantern, on Twitter using the handle at Mr. Jack Lantern, and on Instagram using the handle at the JLP. Thanks for tuning in.